The gloves came off last night in Nevada, where the six top candidates duking it out for the Democratic nomination seemed to make up for eight months of largely attack-free debates all at once. Most of the jabs were directed at Michael Bloomberg, a clear loser of the NBC News debate. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. He didn't get a whole lot done. He had to stop and frisk, throwing a fo- close to five million young black men up against the wall. We have a grotesque and immoral distribution of wealth in income. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong. That's immoral. I don't think there's any chance of uh, the senator beating President Trump. I don't think there's any chance whatsoever. And if he goes and is the candidate, we will have Donald Trump for another four years, and we can't stand that. Sanders, who came in in Nevada with a leg up, still appears to have one. The other big battle of the night, the one between Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, the latter of whom couldn't name the president of Mexico in a recent interview. You're staking your candidacy on your Washington experience. You're on the committee that oversees border security. You're on the committee that does trade. You're literally in uh, part of the committee that's overseeing these things. And we're not able to speak to literally the first thing about the politics of the country you, to ourselves. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? I'm I saying that you shouldn't trivialize that I made that an error. People sometimes forget names. I am the one that has, number one, has the experience based on passing over 100 bills. Experience is, and certainly tenure is not always the same thing as judgment. As for the man they're all vying to replace, here he is at a campaign rally in Arizona commenting on his fellow New York billionaire. I hear he's getting pounded tonight. You know he's in a debate. I hear they're pounding him. He spent $500 million so far And I think he has 15 points. It just came out. Joining me now are Will Nelia Rivera, founder of Rivera Consulting and chief strategist for Congresswoman Ayanna Pressley's campaign. Nice to see you. Steve Kerrigan is former CEO of the Democratic National Convention and president of Barack Obama's inaugural committee. Neither of them has endorsed the candidate. Steve, it's great to see you, too. Were you surprised about how vicious this thing became after nine pretty civil forums? It was about time that I've actually debated things. What What I liked about the format was they said at the very beginning they have a minute and 15 seconds and they should actually engage each other. And I think everybody, starting with Elizabeth Warren, took that really seriously. He wasn't surprised. Were you? Oh, I wasn't surprised at all. I mean, I think given the results that we had coming out of Iowa and New Hampshire, it was time for the gloves to come off, right? See, we got call, We got a, a number of callers on the radio mm-hmm. today who were uh, Democratic voters mm-hmm. who said, I didn't like it. It was too low rent, too much yelling. It, it creates a bad image of the party. I don't buy that at all. Do you? I, this is a primary battle. Right. We need to we need to build the tent that's going to it's going to defeat Donald Trump, but we have to create the contrast so that the country understands what kind of Democrats are going to be. You yes. buy that? Yeah, I mean this the number one thing we have to do whether it's in a debate or on mm-hmm. a stage of any kind or in a, a diner is to plan a campaign and execute a campaign to defeat Donald Trump. That's the number one cause, or one number one task and I think we saw six uh, strong candidates in varying degrees uh, on that stage last night. Uh, uh, so uh, three low-rent people, obviously, all in one <laughs> sense, be just clear. And apparently the most watched Democratic primary debate maybe ever, or yeah. one of them, or that yes. kind of thing. Yeah. So I hate when people do winners and losers, yeah. but I couldn't come up with a better idea. So we're going to do winners <laughs> and losers. Uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, a clear winner last she was right my now. clear she was my clear winner last night I mean I think one of the things I wanted to see from her last night which I think she really she really demonstrated was two things can she throw sharp elbows but also pivot right back to her to her message around who do we need to be as a country right and I think that she really was able to nail that yesterday but also I think also not get into some of the more heated I think debates that did emerge across yeah. the stage especially when Voices were increasing and shouting almost know. was happening at some I don't some know points. that you can't say that she wasn't in a heated debate. Well, she <laughs> was, but at least she wasn't screaming the way that some folks on the stage, I thought, yeah. were. Yeah. So did you buy a clear winner last night? I thought no? she was one of the winners, yeah. I thought, I, look, coming in after those two performances in Iowa, and particularly New Hampshire as a bordering senator, she had to do something different to shake things up, and mm-hmm. I thought she was able to deliver. Well, when you said a number of winners, well, we get to who the others are in a minute. It's yeah. in, one of the things that shocked me today, I, you may have known this, NPR said there were roughly 75,000 
yeah. early voters mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Nevada, yeah. which is almost equal to the total number yeah. of voters 9, at the left. caucuses in 2016. Uh, in 2008, there were maybe 30,000 mm -hmm. more. The bad news for Elizabeth Warren, unless there's a record turnout, right. is virtually everybody has voted already right. out there. Right. Yeah, uh, obviously yeah, so before I, the debate. So the 75,000 are likely going to look a lot more like those pre-debate uh, Nevada polls with Bernie Sanders with a huge chunk of them, uh, Joe Biden with probably 15 points less than them, and then Elizabeth and Pete and, and Amy sort of trailing behind because 75. She probably the problem. The sad thing is she probably organized a ton of those. But um, isn't that a good it, argument against early voting? I know progressives, uh, election reformers like it. They miss a critical part of the campaign, no? No. I mean, I think ultimately it's part of a larger problem when we don't have people that should be participating in the process that could be, right? right. And I think that's a, that's a larger problem that we have. But I also think that I think a, a, a piece that keeps on getting missed in all of this is that only 2% of the delegates have been doled mm -hmm. out. And the Iowa and New Hampshire effect that in traditional primaries we've seen in the past, I don't think any candidates going into Nevada or going into South Carolina or going into um, Super Tuesday with a clear clear lead that's saying Bernie's going to win win the nomination right. slam dunk, right? So I think what we're, 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 everybody's dicing their own strategy on what states they think they can cobble their votes and if their delegates they can. from. If they can. Okay, so we got to move it here. Who's mm -hmm. another winner from last night? I, I would say uh, Vice President Biden. Uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, was a winner. Biden I, was a winner. I Why say, was that again? Yeah, I thought it was his strongest debate performance yet. Yeah, look, it wasn't an Elizabeth that's, performance. Strongest debate performance yet. You buy he, that? He, I, 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 my guess no, is by the noise fine. she was making. Well, no. no. <laughs> I still think Biden is, uh, continues to be a sinking ship. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I don't see that. I thought he connected. He was a, he challenged. Uh, he was the only person to challenge Bernie on almost anything because he challenged him on the fact that he allows gun companies uh, to be exempt from prosecution. He went after. He held, He he backed up Elizabeth's mm -hmm. point on not just stop and frisk, but also on the NDAs and called on, on Bloomberg to do that. And as I've said about Biden before, I'll say it again. He is doing what is necessary uh, to continue his campaign. Okay, so do you have four more winners? Is that what you have? For no, no, no. I have some losers. Oh, we yeah. have some more winners. Yeah. No, Who's uh, in it? Well, I would say that Bernie, because he didn't get beat up a lot, it was a winner. So let's. Talk Talk about Bernie just mm -hmm. for a second. I buy that notion. I mean, he basically wasn't attacked by anybody no. except a little bit of Biden stuff. The oddest moment of the night was the response to, I think, an important question. Why aren't you releasing all your medical yes. records? Like you said, 78, you had a heart attack. And then this incredibly odd comment and reaction from Bloomberg. Here it is about his and health. And thank you, Las Vegas, for the excellent medical care I got in the hospital two days. And I think the one area maybe the Mayor Bloomberg and I share, you have two stents as well. All right. 25 years ago. <laughs> well, we both have two stents. It's a procedure that it's done about a million times a year. Now, would you, I assume you both agree, and I said this on the radio today, there hasn't been enough stent talk in these <laughs> presidential. <laughs> would you not yeah. agree no, with I think you? Yeah, right. I need yeah. more of it. Well, I'd like to know who else has stents and how many. Uh, really, I think we've got to demand <laughs> those kind of things. And you're the man to demand it. <laughs> Thank you. you know, but this is an interesting poll. I mean, uh, uh, Bloomberg took a really low road, speaking of low road, yeah. that communist line. Yeah. And Bernie Sanders, to his credit, says, excuse me, you, you're better than that or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's socialist, not communist. Yeah. However, Gallup poll from a couple of days ago, well, actually a couple of weeks ago, would you vote for a well qualified presidential candidate if they were black, fine, Jewish, fine, woman, fine, gay and lesbian, 78 percent, socialist, only 45 percent. You know, if Bernie Sanders could go in everybody's home and explain what socialist, democratic socialism is, I think it'd be a non-issue. But the reality is, as a lot of moderate Democrats have right. said, it's a scary notion, even if the content is appealing to people. No, I think it's baiting. We're, we're, we're baiting people with the word socialism without knowing what that means in this country. Exactly. So I agree with that. It, it, so I just think it's baiting, and we need to just mute but the But it's also denying a reality. If only 45% who said they'd vote for a well-qualified candidate unless they were a socialist, then it's an issue that is a problem for Bernie Sanders, is it not? Well, but fair the, or unfair? Fair or unfair, you're absolutely yes. right. I think yes. part of what he's lying on is the, the, the other identities I mean, that, that, I, that he has cobbled in his I, coalition. I agree with Pete that I think it would be nice if we actually nominated an actual Democrat. That was a good line it last night, It was a very too. good line. And we don't, yeah. unfortunately, no time for Klobuchar, who I think sort of went from the penthouse, to quote Jesse Jackson, but, in, in New Hampshire yeah. to the outhouse. You yeah. don't think she had a horrible I think performance? She had a, she I had think she had a horrible performance. Horrible. Yeah. But Bloomberg, I mean, look, Bloomberg has shown us that $60 billion can buy you an awful lot of ads, but it can't erase your record, and it can't change your character. Well, let's talk about that for a second. I thought mm -hmm. one of the most tone-deaf moments, and there were tons for Bloomberg, in the era of Me Too, while the jury is yeah. out <laughs> in the Weinstein case, here's part of his response to the whole thing about NDAs that women who have sued the company or filed complaints against the company, non-disclosure agreements, and why he wouldn't release them from those agreements. Here he is. We have a very few 
non-disclosure agreements. How, how many Let is that? Let me finish. How many is that? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be, agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. They signed those agreements, so, and we'll live with on. it. Your head's ready to pop off there. What's your reaction? I don't think if you have to say anything, but yeah. go ahead. I mean, I'm, it's... It really almost leaves you speechless to hear to hear him so so calmly, basically, trigger so many of the stories for why Me Too right. even exists. Right? How he calmly dismisses jokes that he used in the past, saying that women had a choice to sign these NDAs. Right? It just it makes it so clear about are we really fighting a democracy about billionaires? on a larger level, right? Because what we're seeing here, whether or not we could, you know, dispute the merits of whether Trump is a billionaire or not, right? But seeing this level of tenor on both sides of the aisle, it just, it's distasteful. Can I ask one more question about him? I mean, it, sure. Another notion is, despite the fact that the consensus is his performance was abysmal uh, on a, virtually every level, yeah. he still has hundreds of millions of dollars to spend on ads. I don't know if you saw this Twitter ad he put up today. Here's just the first 12 seconds of a heavily edited piece of the debate. Here it is. I'm the only one here that I think that's ever started a business. Is that fair? And by the way, it's 15 more seconds of that, which ends with going back to Bloomberg and him saying, OK, meaning obviously none of you had any response. That's like a deep fake kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. But when you can fund those kinds of things, I assume he'll say it was just a joke. Can he not overcome this horrible performance with another few hundred million dollars in ads on well, Super Tuesday? Sure. I mean, look, it's incumbent on uh, Democrats and Democratic activists to see beyond that, just like it is with a lot of the fake news and other things that are on, on the Internet. This, this campaign is about the character of the country. As Vice President Biden said, it's about the soul of the country. Uh, Mike Bloomberg has been revealed last night to show that bad policies are not a thing of the past for him, that his character is going to be a real issue in this campaign, as it should be for anybody. And by, for my money, I thought Joe Biden was the candidate of character on that stage. I thought there were a bunch of other great candidates up there as well, but Mike Bloomberg absolutely was not one, and that's $60 billion Having said that, yet, cannot buy him the Only 15 speech. seconds left. Uh, uh, Sanders is still clearly the man to beat, is he not? Yes, he is. Is he not? I think in Nevada, yes. I think it'll be hard to sell in the future. 46 out of the 1,991 delegates have been uh, elected so far. It's a long road ahead. You probably know all their names, too. Nice <laughs> to see you, Steve. <laughs> and, uh, it's great it's a to pleasure. see you. Thanks so much, as always. The